They're called the greatest generation, men and women from all walks of life, who grew up in the Great Depression, led our nation to victory in World War II, and helped make America a beacon of freedom and democracy for all the world. And do they have some stories to tell? I'm pleased to be partnering with the New York State Military Museum and Veterans Research Center to preserve the words and memories of many of our World War II veterans. These stories will be entered into the state's archives where they will be accessible to researchers, academics, and future generations. Our veterans have given so much to help build a brighter future for all Americans. This tribute is just one small way of saying thank you. Well, I was in the infantry seven months before I got kicked out. Oh. I had, well, I talked my way in the service. I had polio when I was a, a kid, 14 months old. And uh, they were taking anybody then, so they started limiting service. There was three of us from Fulton who went in, went through basic. So I trans got a transfer to general service right back to week number two all over again, the basics. So. And I lasted another few months and uh, went with the Surrey Fest Division down Camp Rock, Alabama. And by that time, my leg was just about shot. And I tried to get transferred to tanks or artillery and they wouldn't let me, they put me out. Okay. Two weeks after that, I was headed for Africa in the Merch Marine. Okay. So, <laughs> I was in the Merch Marine all the rest of the war. Um, and uh, so tell me about uh, your, some memories that you have serving overseas. Oh, uh, went to a lot of uh, ports in Africa, uh, Casablanca and, and uh, Oran, Arzu, Algiers, and uh, Bazerdi and Tunis. And then we supplied up, uh, was up in uh, Sicily, and then we run back and forth to Anzio Beachhead that winter. And uh, as a matter of fact, I ran into one of the guys uh, that I was in the Army with. He was from Fulton. He, he joined the Rangers. <laughs> and uh, the, the first two Rangers battalions, uh, the first and second, got caught in a trap at the Cisterna, and they got wiped out. And the, he was in the fourth, and the, the force went in to rescue any guys they could, and, and uh, by the time they got through, they lost most of their guys. And they had, uh, when I ran into him, he was, uh, I just joined the uh, Special Forces outfit, that Canadian-American outfit. Okay. And uh, they were, uh, he told me something big was coming up, and the next day they took off, shut off the weekend and took Rome. So. Oh, wow. But then I was in an invasion of southern France, which wasn't it, nothing like it normally. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went into, my next trip was in England, and I was there Christmas Day, 1943, or 1944. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the uh, next trip was in Antwerp, Belgium, and where they were buzz bombing it all the time. They were trying to knock Antwerp up, not trying to knock Antwerp out. And, uh, let's see. Yeah. Then uh, I would come back and they needed sailors on the west coast, so I went over there. Huh. I got in a seagull and tug. They were 40 days hauling three barges from San Francisco to Enemy Talk where we stopped. Oh my gosh. There was gasoline barges. And uh, then we finally ended up in, uh, went to Guam. They wouldn't let us ashore there, afraid we'd get tangled up. So we had us going around the island for three days and finally they sent us up to Saipan, Tinian. And, and uh, we unloaded there and then, then we went to, uh, we picked up a destroyer, the Nukem, which is this one. Okay. They had four suicide planes in it. And they had uh, 42 people killed on that. 
I got pictures of them. I should. I was going to bring it down, but I couldn't locate it right off. Oh. And we towed that back, and we towed a, a PC that had a suicide plan, a LCS that had a suicide plan, and another uh, AM that had a suicide plan. Wow. So we towed them. We didn't tow them all the way. We towed some of them part way, and then somebody else come along, another tow come along, took our tow, okay. uh, half our tow. And we told them uh, the destroyer in Pearl Harbor, and then we picked them up again, took them to San Francisco, and got there the day the war was over. Oh, so. what, uh, what, what, what did you think, how did you find out the war was over? Well, the, the, uh, it was on all the news. That's what, yeah, so is that, that's how you found out, like everyone else, basically? Yeah. Oh, wow. And, um, what, uh, Going back to uh, Christmas Day '44, did you go on shore then? Or oh were yeah, you? I was on shore. Oh, you were? Yeah. Well, I was in Bristol, England. Okay. And was that uh, had that been bombed out? It was pretty bombed out, pretty good. Really? And what was that like to see all that destruction? Uh, uh, I I saw a lot worse over in uh, Cagliari, Sardinia, because they pattern bombed that place. You oh, really walk through the. Uh, Oh, wow. building. There was a lot of buildings knocked out. And what did you do on shore? Oh, whatever, whatever a sailor does, I guess. <laughs> Find a, a nice gin mill and... <laughs> I wasn't a drinker, so I didn't, okay. I didn't uh, go for that. But um, the guys used to like to have me go with them. I'd get them back to the ship. Okay. <laughs> Especially down in Africa. That was... You get in the cans bars. Oh man, that was murder. What uh, what, yeah, what was what was that like? What was what part of Africa? Well, the, the northern bars are uh, the native quarters all over. The, the, see, the, all, most of Africa was owned by French then, mm -hmm. and uh, you go. Uh, just, all the cans bars were off limits, but the guys wanted to look for some women, so. <laughs> If, even they weren't drunk enough to handle those guys. <laughs> <laughs> we got lost in there, one down in Tunis. And it's getting dark, and, and the walls, the streets are about this wide, and then there's overhanging balconies. And I was getting worried, we couldn't gotta get out of there. Just I ran into M an MP, I could have kissed him. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so I told him, you know, how did we get out of here? You get out of here. He says, they're losing a guy a week in here. Oh my God. So, geez, one of the guys that was my buddy, he was an older guy. He'd been in World War One, And uh, he was the nicest guy you wanted to meet. Well, he got to drinking. Oh, he you know, one of those gets miserable when he's uh -huh. drinking. And uh, we got back to the the Red Cross Hotel. We didn't have any sleep, place to sleep, so we were slept in chairs. And he says, I'm going back. And I said, geez, don't. I said, we're losing a guy a week at He said, I don't care. That's the last time I ever saw him. Oh, wow. And, uh, Jeez. Now, were you walking or were you driving through those streets? No, we're walking. Walk. Okay. Yeah. And what, uh, what, are, what are the natives, you know, the... the well, you they, know? They, they were all right. Yeah? But except, you know, some of them they knife you for you know just for what you had on. Yeah. Did you but, feel safe going ashore? Yeah, because it was you know you always want to shore in the crew. Yeah. Do you have? Um, is there one memory from you know during that time that you will always think back to? Is there like one lasting? I don't know maybe favorite memory, but you yeah. know something that you always think of. Guess when I ran into the Donnie Raponi on the Enzo Beach, it was a, he's still living. He's, he lives in Panama City, Florida. Oh, wow. and you keep in contact with him? Yeah. Oh, wow. That is amazing that you'd run into somebody. We were, well, I ran into quite a few. As a matter of fact, I'm one, when we converted to carrying troops at, on this one ship, by one guy from another friend of mine from high school was in, our, in the troops. <laughs> Did you did you know he was overseas? Pardon? Did you know he was overseas? No, he was 
I, we picked them up in, in uh, Philadelphia. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a funny thing. We, we converted to carrying troops, 500, and we loaded ammunition in the number four and five holes up even with the shaft alley so they could put trucks in uh, even, even floor. Mm -hmm. But I, I never could understand that. Paul Hamilton had the same thing on we did, and they got hit with a, with a bomb and just exploded. Just 600, over 600 guys were on that ship. Oh my gosh. I talked to guys that were in that convoy. We were the next convoy. And I talked to guys that were in that convoy and said they had to wash uh, body parts and everything mm -hmm. off the decks and oh, get cleaned up. Gosh. And, uh, just, just random draw of why they got hit, not you. Well, I was in the convoy in back. Yeah. And, and well, they made an attack, and that was it. Oh, man. Um. When did you um, discharge? Was it right after the war? Or did you? Oh, I stayed in for a while. Yeah. I, you know, as a matter of fact, that's what I want to do all my life to go to sea anyway. So. Oh wow. And we, we went to, uh, a, a, I ran into a friend of mine, uh, he was my Navy, Navy radio operator on the Seagull and Tug we were on, we were told to mm -hmm. come back. And uh, I ran into him in Rochester up to a meeting one time. He said, how come I, you know, didn't uh, uh, know he lived around here? And he said, well, he says, he, he lived in uh, Indiana, and then he went to Purdue University and he got a job at Holcomb, whole summer. I, anyways, ended up at Xerox. Oh, wow. And uh, as a matter of fact, he set up the first assembly line there. Oh, wow. Xerox. But we were friends from that point on again. So. Oh, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> Small world. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways, we, we uh, got in touch with this. Uh, we see this Newcomb was having a reunion. So we got in touch with them, asked if we come, and geez, we went to three different reunions they had. And it, was, it was great talking to those guys where they were when they got hit. And it's, it was amazing that uh, it was still afloat. Mm -hmm. 